Today I'm in Oxford, more specifically the suburb of Headington, where down a fairly normal suburban street, you'll find this. You don't need me to tell you that this house has a shark sticking out of it. You also don't need me to tell you that the shark isn't real. Although the house is. It was once owned by an eccentric local radio presenter named Bill Heiner. He asked his friend, the sculptor John Buckley, if there was any way he could liven up the house. So Buckley designed the Headington Shark. It was erected on the 9th of August 1986, the 41st anniversary of the Americans dropping the atomic bomb on Nagasaki during the Second World War. And that's not coincidental. It was partly inspired by Bill Heiner seeing military planes flying over to bomb Tripoli on the night he moved into the house. And the Headington Shark, or Untitled 1986 as it's officially known, is supposed to be a commentary on military intervention. According to Heiner, the shark was to express someone feeling totally impotent and ripping a hole in their roof out of a sense of impotence and anger and desperation. It's saying something about the campaign for nuclear disarmament, nuclear power, Chernobyl and Nagasaki. Apparently, Bill Heiner also just really liked sharks, so that's probably another reason behind it. The sculpture took three months to construct out of fiberglass. It weighs around 200 kilos and is 7.5 metres or 25 feet long. So needless to say, it was controversial when it first appeared. It was put in place in the early hours of the morning using a crane. The police were aware of it, but there was nothing they could really do to stop it. But it was erected without planning permission, which sparked a six-year row between Bill Heiner and the local council, eventually reaching the UK government. Oxford City Council was strongly opposed to the sculpture sticking out of the house and offered to display it at a local swimming pool instead. But Bill Heiner wasn't interested. He finally submitted a planning application for the shark, but it was rejected. So he appealed to what was then called the Department of the Environment. The Environment Secretary at the time was none other than Michael Heseltine. He travelled to Oxford to visit the shark, and his planning inspector, Peter MacDonald, later decided the Headington shark could stay, saying, It's not in dispute that this is a large and prominent feature. That was the intention. But the intention of the appellant and the artist is not an issue as far as planning permission is concerned. The case should be decided on its planning merits, not by resorting to utilitarianism in the sense of the greatest good to the greatest number. And it's necessary to consider the relationship between the shark and its setting. In this case, it's not in dispute that the shark is not in harmony with its surroundings, but then it's not intended to be in harmony with them. The basic facts are there for almost all to see. Into this archetypal urban setting crashes almost literally the shark. The contrast is deliberate, and in this sense the work is quite specific to its setting. As a work of art, the sculpture, untitled 1986, would be read quite differently in, say, an art gallery, or on another site. An incongruous object can become accepted as a landmark after a time, becoming well-known, even well-loved in the process. Something of this sort seems to have happened for many people to the so-called Oxford Shark. The council is understandably concerned about precedent here. The first concern is simple, proliferation with sharks, and heaven knows what else, crashing through roofs all over the city. This fear is exaggerated. In the five years since the shark was erected, no other examples have occurred. Only very recently has there been a proposal for twin baby sharks in the Ifley Road, But any system of control must make some small place for the dynamic, the unexpected, the downright quirky. I therefore recommend that the Headington Shark be allowed to remain. This was a massive victory for Bill Heiner and the local community, who'd grown to support the shark. 
In 2016, the house was in danger of being repossessed, and Bill Heiner's son, Magnus, stepped in and bought the property, turning it into an Airbnb. He feared the shark would be removed so the house could be sold as just another normal terraced house. He said at the time, this much-loved piece of art might be destroyed by another set of bureaucrats unable to deal with something that wouldn't fit a standardised form. I couldn't allow that to happen. In the end, I agreed to preserve this piece of history and join the fight for its survival. The shark is safe for now. Thank you for watching and I just wanted to say hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I've had a sudden influx over the past couple of months and I have no idea where you've all come from but thank you for watching, commenting and subscribing. More episodes of the alternative travelogues will be coming soon but in the meantime here's a sneak peek at what you can expect.